Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today. You need to beware. Beware of the new banking that is happening around the world. And uh, it's almost unbelievable what's happening. Uh, before I get into it, please take a second. Please hit the like button on the video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. And do not forget to hit the bell notification to get notified on everything that's happening. First things first, you need to be aware of what's happening with banking because there are huge changes. And here's the thing. If I got, you know, one story from one person, that would be one thing. But one story this week turns into two, turns into five, turns into 16 different stories that we received from around the globe with banking problems. And they're all from different banks, but it's the same type of thing. So let's get into it. First things first, I have a subscriber who's written me a bunch of times. Very sharp woman who asked me not to use her name or what she does for a living or exactly where she's at in the world. So we're just gonna call her L. okay? Now, L's a professional. L wrote me, has written me a bunch of times, but she wrote me about a banking problem with the Bank of Scotland. And this is very unique. She's had a banking relationship with them for over a decade. Uh, wakes up and they lowered her limit to 250 pounds uh, per day that she could get out of the Bank of Scotland. And uh, ridiculous to say the least because she's a professional person. And, and uh, think about this, not that you'd go and spend more than $250 or 250 pounds, but just to have that limitation on you you know, you can't go buy a computer. You can't go and, oh, I want that chair. I, I want this. I want to go fix my car. There's not much you can do with $250 when you think about that. That's the first thing. The other thing is that they started to ask for things that we've heard of over the course of the last month from people from around the world. We need to re-verify your account. Now, Okay, well, what do you mean you need to re-verify my account? Now think about this. When you guys have set up your account, you walk in there with your ID. You walk in there with another form of ID, whether it be another credit card, your social security card, something that would verify who you say you are, and uh, they open the account. You know, they check online, they check your credit, they do all that stuff that they say they don't do, but they do that. And, you know, throughout you know, your relationship with the bank, then they determine if they're gonna give you a credit card, if they're gonna offer you a home loan or a business loan, depending on what you do for a living. Well, what banks are doing right now, and the Economic Ninja talked about this here in California, is that, hey, we need you to verify who you are. And, and this guy has multiple banks, bank accounts at one branch, so they know who he is. Now, L, the thing about her, is that she's a professional woman getting paid uh, for her career and basically they've completely shut her off and they even went as far as uh, limiting her credit card limit which was a, another problem but again always paid it never had a problem with this now what we're seeing with these banks is that this is happening all around the world now let's leave the Bank of Scotland for a second and let's go to Barclays Bank Barclays Bank around the globe is doing this to people as well. Verify your identity. And again, you have this relationship with the bank. The banks are trying to get us not to go into these branches and they want to have us uh, be outside and do everything online, which for some of us is impossible to do everything online, okay? So, verify your identity, credit card bills, uh, utility bills, things like that. No, I don't want to do that. Well, here's the deal. If you want your credit lane, your credit uh, line raise and your spending line raise, we can get uh, that approved if you do biometric banking. Now, what is biometric banking? That is when you walk in there and give them your fingerprint so they can use your fingerprint for identity or your eye or your face. I mean, guys, this is getting crazy right now. So. She said, absolutely not. Elle was like, pass, I'm not gonna do that. I have no intention of doing that. It's none of your business. You're not gonna have access to that stuff. Because guys, as far as limitations and you know problems with the man, okay? I mean, I think it gets kind of intrusive when you get to a certain point. But the problem with this is that this is happening everywhere. 
and it's happening with Chase Bank. It's happening with the Barclays. It's happening with Bank of you know Bank of Scotland. It's happening with Bank of America. It happened here in California uh, uh, with the Ninja. It's happening all over. Okay, so this is not just a, a weird coincidence that this is happening. <sighs> Having the spend limit, the spending limit lowered is ridiculous. Because again. I've sat down and looked at this, and there are people that have written me that have had $100,000 spending limits. Now, multi-millionaires, guys, they can buy whatever. They can buy cars, planes, motorcycles, whatever the hell they want on their credit cards and stuff like that. But do you know what your spending limit is? Because I went down, and they go, oh, it's $5,000 in this account, and it's $3,800 in this account. Okay, we'll raise it to $5,000 too. Okay. So I went and looked at this because I was really curious about this, and have you heard about this? Well... The bank's cracking down, Dan. Uh, we're just trying to protect ourselves with what's coming in the future and making sure that we don't have any potential losses. Now, here's the other thing. If they don't like your job and they don't like what you do for a living, this is a great way to control you not being able to live. Now, you can sit there and say, well, Dan, you know, she, Elle can go out and earn money. Great. She can't spend the money that she earns with that bank. Now, the other thing, think about this. If she wants to transfer the money, they will only allow her to transfer $250 a day. Let's say L has $25,000 in this bank. Well, she's gonna have to go out and transfer $250 a day, which is terrible. Now, Barclays Bank, this is a real problem because Barclays Bank is limiting people and they're cutting people's overdraft protection. Now with a bank, with a business, with people that go out, let's say you get paid on this date and you know that's gonna happen and you've got your car to get worked on and you're gonna $1,800 bill, you write a check, overdraft's gonna cover it, and then you get paid, you know, write the check on Wednesday, check goes through, Friday you get paid, overdraft is paid, no big deal. That's what it's for. It's not just for, you know, you to be a spendthrift and not pay attention to this. So one woman, great story below, was using Barclays Bank and went out and uh, they just cut off her uh, overdraft protection. But as I started talking to the other banks, are you cutting overdraft, uh, overdraft protection with your clients? Yes, it's being re uh, reviewed uh, periodically with each individual and on an individual basis, we're making those decisions. So again, guys, give us your fingerprints, give us your facial recognition, give us uh your palm print no you know what i mean what's next blood i mean it, it gets crazy guys when you sit there and you think about this in the future so if this was one bank it would be one thing if it was one industry it would be one thing but when you have people that are lawyers people that are writers people that are contractors people that are uh, in the service industry, people that sell merchandise online and having their bank accounts limited for that, that's n unnerving to say the least. So it's not just one group of people or one uh, group of professionals that are having this problem. It's happening, you know, across the board with everybody. We are seeing more and more banks that are um, shutting down accounts. And inside the UK, we're seeing that, where that we are having more and more people uh, losing access to branches around the globe. So the biometric banking is coming. And again, it is a way to control us. It is a way to to limit our transactions. But, you know, the other thing that Elle told me that was really disturbing was her PayPal account uh, was frozen. And they froze it for six months. Now, um, I've had multiple PayPal, PayPal accounts for business and for personal use. And gosh, over a decade ago. I had uh, opened up a new PayPal account, a couple months into it, we started selling a bunch of stuff, and all of a sudden, they started to freeze the transactions, and I'm, we're like, what are you doing? Hey, you guys are selling a lot. A lot of this money's coming into this account. What is this about? So we showed them contracts, we showed them the advertising. Well, why is this working so well? Why are you getting so much business from this? You know, and me being the arrogant and, uh, you know, person that I was, uh, I explained to them how stupid they were 
and uh, how obviously if you knew how to sell and you knew how to advertise, uh, you would be able to do something like this and everybody would do it. But I know what I'm doing. And again, it was <laughs> the wrong way to do it. And uh, they said, okay, well, we're gonna freeze this. So we're, we're not gonna let get you access to this, to this uh, money and we're gonna hold it for 180 days, like they did with Al. Well, me, I'm the guy that fired up the attorney. And, oh, look, guys, that tree that was all big and beautiful, not anymore. They shaved it. That's what happens when somebody buys a $17 million house. They they shave the tree. That's sad. That That's just, that's not a pretty picture anymore. So, anyways, um, I got the attorney involved, and uh, with a letter, he got them down to 90 days. He says, that's what, listen to me. He's like, again, Dan, 90 days is nothing. It's three months. You can wait three months. On the 91st day, they said you can withdraw the money, you know, do everything for the clients, and you'll have no issues. And uh, that's what we did. Now, the problem with this and with PayPal, when they freeze this money, they don't always give it back right away. And, you know, there is a percentage of people, and think about this, that get $5,000 held, $1,000, $50,000 held from PayPal. Some people never go back for that money. Is that insane? I, that, that is absolute lunacy that they never go back for their money. Now, you know, one thing that Don from Ohio sent me, and that is we've been really good with having people go to unclaimed property around the world and look at the state that you live in. Like here in California, I did a video on this a year and a half ago. Hey, go and, you know, look at your unclaimed property. And, and what it is, think about this. If you had a deposit on an apartment, if you bought an insurance policy, it canceled and the money wasn't refunded to you, you moved and you had a deposit for the utilities, things like that, but it could be a myriad of things. And California is really on top of this. If you go to, to unclaimed.org, They've got a, a statewide map that you can click on and you can uh, you know, go to your state and check your name and see if you have any money. And uh, I did it and I got a check in, in less than three weeks for this. So it's absolutely amazing and I highly recommend everybody do this. But these new banking policies that are happening are happening around the globe. They're happening with everybody and they're freezing people's money. And again, let's say you're a contractor and you have a $250 spending limit in a day, how do, you, how do you do the Jones room edition that you just got hired for? You can't, you cannot do that. You cannot go and buy plywood and go buy lumber and oh gosh, he got the electrical done so quick, we can start on this today. You can't do that, you're done. So the problem with this is that they are doing this to people that are just professionals, writers, like I said, attorneys, um, different people that are in social, uh, performance jobs where they're out there amongst people and uh, that's horrible and again are they being targeted I don't know you know we talked about people that that purchase guns and purchase things like that and uh, you know those are people have had problems we know that but when you have multiple banks USAA bank doing the same thing limiting people's transactions get worried guys seriously you know I you know I I sat down with my accountant today and we were talking about this and how um you know uh, going and having these reviews with everybody and having this you know this time of the year for the end of the year and, and preparing more people need to do this and they don't but you need to look at everything you need to look at all your credit cards you need to look at all your billing statements uh there's so much to it but share your thoughts on this so far guys uh it's beautiful. It's too bad they cut that tree down. I mean, that really is. For those of you that follow the channel, you guys know that thing was big and bushy and beautiful and just uh, overlooked Newport Bay. And I guess the guy that bought the new house, that's what he wanted to do. So share your thoughts on this so far. Now, I found a great article on biometric banking that you have to read. I mean, it is crazy. And uh, all these dogs are convenient on this corner at the same time. But biometric banking, 
they say is the future. Now, here's what's interesting. NatWest Bank in the UK, Ippolito sent me this. And uh, one thing that's fascinating is they're gonna close another 43 branches for you guys that are NatWest Bank customers because we wanna get rid of street banking, which makes it sound like you're a crack dealer with working on a street corner. 64% uh, of the transactions are online and uh, you know, 19% of the people that actually walk into a branch actually need the services. Well, those are the people that wanna have full service guys. That's what that is. So NatWest Bank closing. 43 more branches you know when you compare all this stuff it makes you think that they just don't want to have a regular customer experience and more things are going online right now uh, it is crazy to think about this because you've got TD Bank in Canada that just announced that they're going to work with a thousand post office in Canada to give people short-term loans so they're gonna go into, uh, Toronto Dominion Bank, TD Bank, is gonna go into the payday loan business, short-term loan business, where they're gonna lend people $1,000 or less. More and more people are going to the post office outside the United States for their banking. They're not doing it uh, through a traditional bank. But Toronto Dominion Bank said, we're, we're, we are shocked. If you read this article out of uh, American Banker, they're talking about how we are shocked at the amount of people that want to use uh, uh, this service. Yeah, people are broke. People don't know where to go. Oh my gosh, you'll lend me money? How, uh, what's the interest rate? Okay, when can I get the money? That's all they care about right now. It's not fiscal responsibility. It's not paying loans on time. It's not to do anything. Now, a couple things that is uh, absolutely shocking and that is uh, two people sent me different things about Amazon. And one woman got her statement online and said that there was a $5.99 charge from Amazon. She's like, I didn't buy anything from Amazon last month. And uh, so, you know, like all good people, instead of just letting it go, she looks at, uh, looks it up, gets a hold of her online banking. And they said, oh, wait a second, because you have the new Amazon app, as of this month, we're starting to charge you $5.99 for the access to the app. So $5.99 a month. Has anybody else been clipped with this? And again, clipping is taking advantage of somebody, charging them, ripping them off. Has anybody else been clipped with a $5.99 fee? Which doesn't add up, but when you think of the tens of millions of people that have that app that are paying for that, crazy. Now, another woman sent me an ad today, this one right here, showing that you can buy a $40 pair of jeans and if you wanna pay $8 a month for those jeans, you can do that on Amazon now. The world is doomed, guys, okay? If you can't afford the $40 jeans, don't buy the $40 jeans. Don't buy anything you, can, you cannot afford right now. Financing jeans, guys, okay? It's falling apart around us. Now, the problems with these banks are only getting worse. So have you guys experienced this? Every time I ask these questions, I get inundated with great news and great calls and great updates from everybody. Has anybody else experienced this nightmare? Because it's horrible, it's unfair. They are completely taking advantage of us, but they want to get rid of us as regular clients. They want to get us indebted to them so that we are upside down and, and paying bills all the time. You know, I got something else sent to me today that was disturbing. It was about how, you know, about 98% of all the PPP loans, that was the payroll protection plan loans for people that were basically forgiven without any scrutiny. But now they're going back one by one and looking at those loans to determine if people were entitled to that money or not. So the people out there that committed fraud and the people that lied about this are getting phone calls from these places and, and now now think about this there are websites right now where if you worked for somebody you know the guy committed fraud and he owned a jewelry store and went and bought himself a ferrari or did something really despicable like that uh people are turning people in for that right now and they're these people are getting uh arrested and people are getting charged with this so these people that think that they just got away with this you know as we have you know a national debt of 31 trillion dollars and these people just got free money it's it's going to be a problem for them
By the way, look at how low the tide is right now, guys. You can see all that? I mean, it's just incredibly low right now. You really wouldn't want to take any decent-sized boat out here right now. It's really odd. People send me the uh, uh, the tide patterns and all that stuff, which is always fascinating. You know. I'm not a fan of the islands like this that you can't drive on. It's just ridiculous. A little too much. So, share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys, right now. Are you guys paying the Amazon fees? Anybody buy anything through Prime that was worthwhile? Just let me know. Really curious about this. One thing I love about this channel is when we share news and I make a prediction and it comes true. There's that. The other thing is competing news stories. Well, we're starting to see things that are competing on the same day, but in the same newspapers. Let me give you an example. First one is the New York Post. New York Post has a couple great articles on their own would be fantastic. You got Jeremy Siegel, who is the Wharton professor talking about how we need to worry about core inflation and not run our economy just on core inflation because it's going to make interest rates go up too high. So you have that. And then you have that fat cat, Jamie Dimon, sitting there saying that, listen, if they keep raising, uh, if, if inflation isn't brought under control, we're going to get interest rates above four and a half percent. Well, yes, they're both going to happen. Okay. We are going to see interest rates well above four and a half percent. And uh, Mr. Siegel, having them just try to chase the tail of inflation, that is completely under control and it's not, it's getting worse. And you guys buy things, you purchase things in the stores, you go out every day, you buy gas, you buy auto parts, you buy stuff for your backyard, stuff for your kids, clothes, everything, everything has gone up. Nothing has gone down. The things that have gone down onesies, twosies, you're lucky you're getting them. And everything in our lives has completely spiked. Now, this leads to the story that we talked about earlier, and that was things that are gonna happen. One thing that I predicted was you're going to see businesses merge, and you're gonna see them join forces and talk about these mega companies that are gonna be fantastic, and that's complete shenanigans, because they're doing this for complete survival. Now, Kroger, the huge behemoth uh, supermarket chain, is in talks right now with Albertsons, which is a company here in California, about joining, you know, these two rivals getting together. Wouldn't it be great? You know, the two minds and all this customer service that they have combined. No, it's 100% based on survival, guys. That is the only reason why they're in the talks to do this right now. If you think it's anything other than that, they could care less. They could care less about us. They want to stay in business and that is it. So, you know, would that be good if you had Kroger and uh, Albertsons together? Who knows? Who knows? I don't care. As long as, you know, they keep the uh, deli counter and the nice lady that cuts my meats and stuff. She's always great at Albertsons, that is. Okay? So share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys, because, again, interest rates are going to go up. They're not going to, you know, stop. Uh, Inflation is going to go up and you have these two competing stories. Read the stories. They're fantastic. The third story is from the New York Post as well about this potential merger with Kroger and with Albertsons. And again, everybody has their idea of the perfect market. You know, it's, it was cool. When I went to Texas last year, got to experience some different markets, HEB and all this other stuff and got to go to an academy, uh, you know, sports place. Oh my God, that was, that was, you know, hunting and fishing fantasy land is what that place was so share your thoughts and all that stuff guys because we don't have either one of those in california right now so really want to know what you guys think about all this I'm going to finish this video with these last few stories. The first one is the COLA adjustment, which is the cost of living adjustment for people on Social Security was just announced, and it's going to be 8.7%. A lot of money, 
But when you look at it, look at this year's, what was it, 5.6%, inflation's higher, so they lost money this year, even though they got a huge dollar increase on that month to month. There's that. Second thing is I found something very good because we've asked this question, who has all these mortgages and all these commercial locations that are going upside down? And there is a company called the TREP company, T-R-E-P-P -P company. And I found a great article where they talked about uh, Kohl's, Bed Bath & Beyond and FedEx and how there is a huge problem with these commercial loans right now. And regionally you can see where they're having trouble. And it's a great article and the two gentlemen that put it together did a really good job and it's, it's below for you. And the final thing is Elon Musk. Elon Musk is selling a perfume now as a perfume salesman and he is selling something called burnt hair perfume <laughs> and uh it is the repugnant repugnant smell of burnt hair just think this is like leaning over a candle and burning your hair at the kitchen table without the hard work that's what the perfume smells like the, the sick thing about this is that it's a hundred dollars a piece and he sold twenty thousand of them now the best part is elon musk issued a tweet today and said, <laughs> please buy my perfume so I can buy Twitter. Okay, the guy's got the greatest sense of humor in the world, clearly. I, for one, am gonna call this the way it is. We need to ban the uh, Warren Buffett lunch and we need to have the Elon Musk lunch every year. There's gotta be somebody that can pay for an Elon Musk lunch because I'm telling you, I want the first lunch with this guy for a few reasons. Number one, what does that guy eat? Can you imagine having a meal with Elon Musk? Just to watch that guy order a pizza, uh, watch him order a sandwich, anything. I would like to know what's on it, okay, first of all. That would be crazy. And then to talk about business, but clearly this guy is charming. Clearly this guy's got a sense of humor. I have ridden this guy for the last year and a half like nobody else has. And uh, the guy just sold $2 million worth of perfume. So lesson learned, guys. If you want to sell something from your audience, look at Elon Musk and I want the first Elon Musk lunch. Uh, when he does that. So um, see if you guys can hook that up for me. Do not forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we have an email list. You can look at the links below. We had an email go out this week. There is more exclusive content on Patreon also. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm so happy to be here. It's a gloomy day for the gloom and doom of banking. But again, guys, beware of all this banking stuff. Beware of what they're billing you for. Beware of everything because it's happening right before your eyes and they're trying to put it under your nose. Kind of like burnt hair, but you can smell it. So burnt hair perfume, okay? Who knew? Did you, anybody buy it out there, first of all? That's what I want to know. So share your thoughts. I will see you guys very soon.